Hi, good evening. I hope that you are having a good day and thank you for being on time. I see that just two people are in, it's raining heavy. So it's understandable that probably many people is having issues to get into the section, but we need to continue with the program in honor to the people who is uh, early. So we're going to continue with yesterday's topic and we're going to finish the section number five today. Uh, to begin with the class, we have the video about uh, pronunciation of negative contractions. So we're gonna start from there. Let me share the screen with you so that we can see the video I'm talking about. for you to listen and repeat the contractions until you feel comfortable. Hi everyone, in this class you learn to sound natural when expressing contractions. Let's get started by analyzing the contractions on this chart. Aren't, weren't, don't, can't. Two syllables, isn't, wasn't, doesn't, didn't. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. I don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. These aren't their swimsuits. They can't swim. He wasn't here yesterday and he isn't here today. A quick tip to follow when expressing contractions is to extend the N. For example, I can't, they weren't. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to listen and repeat the contractions until you feel comfortable pronouncing them. Okay, so this is what we just listened on the video and it is about the negative contractions that we have been practicing so far. And one tip that is on the video uh, to sound natural when pronouncing negative contractions in English is to extend the um, N. So you say, aren't, don't. Right, so you can stand a little bit the N sound to sound very natural. So I'm going to play the recording again so you to be able to repeat at home. Page 102, exercise four, pronunciation. Negative contractions. Part A, listen and practice. One syllable. Aren't, weren't, don't, can't, two syllables, isn't, wasn't, doesn't, didn't, page 102, exercise 4, pronunciation, negative contractions, part A, listen and practice, one syllable, aren't, 
weren't. Don't. Can't. Two syllables. Isn't. Wasn't. Doesn't. Didn't. Okay, now we're going to listen to this short paragraph in which all the negative constructions are being used. So let's listen. I'm going to pause every single time that I found a period. I'm going to stop the recording after each statement so that you can repeat at home. Page 102, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and practice. He didn't eat dinner because he wasn't hungry. I don't like coffee, and she doesn't like tea. This isn't my swimsuit. I can't swim. They weren't here yesterday, and they aren't here today. Page 102, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and practice. He didn't eat dinner because he wasn't hungry. I don't like coffee, and she doesn't like tea. This isn't my swimsuit. I can't swim. They weren't here yesterday, and they aren't here today. Right after this short pronunciation practice, we're going to continue with our presentation and see. We're going to over. Yesterday, we did the exercises on questions uh, with the simple past of the verb be. So now we're going to continue. We already did this exercise. So let's move to this one, to the WH questions with did, was, and were. So for this, I'm going to share the video from the platform. And uh, we're going to practice after that. After that, we need to add the subject, you. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn to ask and answer WH questions with did, was, and where. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real-life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, Where Did You Grow Up? Let's listen and practice. So Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there, too. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. So why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. And I love it. Look, what do you think? Well, uh... Now, let's analyze how to form questions with 
did, was, and where. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. When did you come to Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles in 1990. Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. How old were you in 1990? I was 18. What was your major in college? It was drama. How was college? It was great. I would like to point out that the key to understanding this topic is to not get confused with the following question. When do I use did and when do I use was or where? You must remember the following. You will use was or where whenever you need to ask something related to the verb be. And you will use did for all the rest of the verbs in English. Now, let's analyze the questions and answers. We've already covered both of these topics. What we're doing now is presenting them together, hoping that it's not confusing or difficult. So, let's start with questions with did. When forming questions in the past tense with any verb that is not the verb to be, we can follow this formula. WH word plus did plus subject plus verb in the present plus complement. This is the case of our first three questions. Where did you grow up? When did you come to Los Angeles? Why did you become a hairstylist? First, we're going to add a WH word, where. Then we will include the auxiliary verb to form the question in the past did. After that, we need to add the subject, you. Next, we include the verb in the present tense, grow up. Finally, we can add a complement. In this case, there is no complement. Towards the right-hand side of this chart, you can see how these questions are answered. If you notice, the verbs change to the past tense now because we're no longer adding an auxiliary verb. Let's move on to asking questions in the past tense with was or where. We will use this structure whenever we want to ask something using the verb to be. We can't say the following. Did you were a good student? This is incorrect. To form questions in the past, using was or where, we can follow this formula. WH word plus was or where plus a subject plus a complement. Let's break down an example from the chart. What was your major in college? First we need to add the WH word, what. Then we need to add was or where. After that we include the subject, your major. Finally, we need to add a complement and a question mark at the end. In college. Now it's your turn to practice making WH questions with did, was, and where. Practice making similar questions such as the ones on this chart. But now focus on asking them about yourself or your family. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Let's continue by um, listening to the conversation first. And after that, we're going to discuss about how to form the questions, which is something that we already studied. But in this case, we are combining the WH questions with the past of B, as well as the WH questions with the rest of the verbs. But First, let's practice the conversation, and after that, we're going to discuss and practice the grammar spot. So I'm going to play the recording here so that you can repeat at home. Let me um, put this like 
uh, I think that you can cover this in the side. Okay, let's see. Let's repeat. Page 102, exercise five, conversation. I grew up in Texas. Listen and practice. So, Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. Were you born there? Yeah, I was born in Dallas. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 2000. How old were you then? I was 18. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. Really? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money, and I love it. So, what do you think? Well, uh... Before the second practice, I would like to know if you have any questions regarding to new vocabulary or pronunciation. Tengo una duda. Yes. Eh, el, el verbo grow por sí solo significa crecer o tiene que ir acompañado de grow up. Um, in this case, when you talk about, eh, cuando estamos hablando de crecer, um, ¿cómo se llama? De, de, ay, sí, cuando estamos hablando de crecer, de donde crecimos, ¿verdad? Como personas, como seres humanos, donde es, sí, es grow up. Pero no siempre va así. Por ejemplo, también como esto quiere decir cultivar algo. Entonces, eh, en ese no necesita el up cuando estamos hablando de cultivos, de cultivar. Como de um, um, plantas y cultivos. O so es, es también se usa el verbo grow. I grow plants. Sometimes I grow suculentas or cactuses. ¿Ya? Yeah? Gracias. Otra pregunta, teacher. Sí. ¿Cómo se dice el bachillerato en, en inglés? ¿College es universidad? Sí, college es la universidad y bachillerato es high school. High school. Ajá. Se los voy a escribir en el chat. High school. High school. Okay, así como está en el chat, high school. That is bachillerato. Any other question? Buenas noches, teacher. Con ¿Vale? respecto a la pronunciación de grow up en presente y en pasado, suena similar. Es un poco, pero no tanto. So, en presente es grow up, grow up, grow up. Y se grew une, up. grow up. Y en pasas, grew up, grew, como grew, como el villano de los minions, grew up, grew up. Uh -huh. Grow up. Grow up. Yes. Y otro es grow, grow up. Excelente, grow up, grow up, así con off de un solo y se une con up, grow up. I grow up. 
y el otro es grew up, es como uh, grew up, en pasado, grew up. Y la otra eh, palabra, teacher, no sé si la pronunció bien, higher list o higher style. Hair, hair stylist, hair stylist. Hair stylist. Ajá, lo puede dividir primero, decir hair stylist. Hair stylist. Y luego cuando ya se siente un poco más confiada y lo unimos. Hair stylist. Hair stylist. Hair, hair stylist. Stylist. Uh -huh. Gracias, Chi. You're welcome. Any other question? No more questions. Estilo, estilo, eh, sale belleza. ¿Qué significa hair stylist? Hair stylist es estilista de cabello en este caso. Estilista de cabello. Ajá, hair stylist. Hair cabello, stylist, estilista. Okay, Ajá, exacto, estilista de cabello, hair stylist. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, if there are no more questions, I'm going to play the recording once again so you can continue practicing before the breakout rooms. Page 102, Exercise 5, Conversation. I grew up in Texas. Listen and practice. So, Chuck... Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. Were you born there? Yeah, I was born in Dallas. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 2000. How old were you then? I was 18. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. Really? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money, and I love it. So, what do you think? Well, uh... Okay, you have this conversation in the PowerPoint presentation that I sent. And if not, you can also go ahead and take a screenshot here. If you are not able to download the presentation or to see it, you can do it here. So I'm going to create the breakout room so that you can practice.
Well, now that everybody is here back again, let us discuss the grammar point that we study in the platform. Let's let me get this uh okay this is bigger for you so to explain or to um, broaden about the grammar topic i'm going to switch from english to espanol porque creo que es un poco más sencillo para lo que es la gramática no sé si uh, tienen alguna duda esto lo vimos ahorita en la plataforma eh, ya está las wh questions we did was and were se nos dieron como las fórmulas y algunos pequeños tips. ¿Cómo sienten este tema? ¿Está complicado? What do you think? Sí, está un poco más complicado. Como que ya estamos en la final bien y al principio otro módulo. Eh, comienza a sentirlo bueno. <ríe> Exacto, muy buena observación, Álvaro. Eh, y de hecho, sí, recuerden que ya van, irían como a intermedios o tienen que ya aprender a, a utilizar combinaciones de, de gramaticales y de tiempos algunas veces. Esto, por ejemplo, aquí solo estamos combinando pasado simple. Solo que recuerden lo que les explicaba la vez pasada, que es como el pasado simple, al igual que el presente, se divide en dos. Digamos que lo podemos ver como el pasado simple con cualquier otro verbo que no tenga que ver con cero estar y el pasado simple con cero estar. Siempre que vayamos a utilizar un verbo que no sea cero estar en pasado, vamos a conjugarlo si es en oraciones simples, ¿verdad? Eh, si son oraciones negativas, acuérdense que se usa el auxiliar did not. Y no utilizamos el, la conjugación verbal, ¿verdad? Porque ya está el auxiliar did. Lo mismo pasa en las preguntas. Utilizamos did, por lo cual no conjugamos el verbo. Por el contrario, el pasado del verbo be, que es was y were, ese no necesita auxiliar. Cuando tengamos el verbo ser o estar, was o were, no vamos a usar otro verbo y no vamos a usar el auxiliar be, el, el did. No sé si está como más claro así. Pues ahí donde nos confundimos de repente, que no sabemos en qué, en qué momento del was, were, usaremos el did y cuándo no. Eh, vaya. No sé, solamente estaré confundido, tal vez algunos otros compañeros por ahí que se expresen, pues, porque eh, vaya. sería lo más, lo más ideal, ¿verdad? Eh, sí, sí. Dígame. ¿Cree que nos puede poner una como, esas son como las fórmulas de, de, de la utilización? Eh, ¿Cree que nos los puede mandar eso por el WhatsApp para que nos quede como chequeo y, y así también para nosotros? grabarlo, porque si sí, todo eso, lo que usted dijo, me hubiera gustado grabarlo, porque nos lo dio todo la, prácticamente lo que hemos visto, y este, pero no me quedó tiempo de escribirlo, entonces mejor me gustaría que si lo pudiese pasar por el WhatsApp, mucho que mejor. Ok. Ok, lo voy a anotar. A ver, lo, lo hace eh, mañana o no sé. Sí, perfecto, yo se los envío, eh, Tal vez mañana en el transcurso del día y pues como para um, um, hacer un poco más amplia la explicación. Vaya, por ejemplo, si yo quiero preguntarle. Vaya, hagamos una recapitulación y un par de ejercicios para que quede un poquito más claro que es, es muy importante, ¿verdad? Eh, hacer como... Um, el saber cuándo vamos a usar did, ya dijimos, es cuando hablemos sobre alguna acción que no tenga que ver con cero estar. Por ejemplo, si yo le quiero preguntar, eh, ¿qué comiste anoche? El verbo ahí es comer, entonces no tiene que ver con el cero estar. Entonces, si yo quiero preguntarle, ¿qué comiste anoche? Voy a utilizar el auxiliar did, ¿verdad? Porque es un verbo, el verbo comer no tiene que ver con cero estar. 
Entonces, vamos a empezar por la WH question, que sería what, porque yo quiero saber qué. Luego el auxiliar did, sujeto, el verbo, y no lo conjugo porque estoy usando el auxiliar de pasado. What did you eat yesterday? Entonces, esa es una WH question con un verbo que no es cero estar. Y pues ahí damos información. Ya para dar la información, sí tengo que conjugar el verbo porque en las oraciones afirmativas no, no hay auxiliar. Entonces, si yo quiero decir, eh, comí pupusas ayer. I ate pupusas. ¿Ya? Ahora, bueno, aquí sí lo conjugué. Porque pues era una oración afirmativa. Ahora si yo quiero preguntarle a la persona. Eh, Vaya algo con cero estar. Fuiste o estuviste. Yo le quiero preguntar. Eh, ¿Estuviste en el trabajo ayer? Entonces. Um, Um, haciendo siempre una WH question, vaya, porque decirle, preguntarle si estuvo en el trabajo ayer sería una pregunta, una yes, no question, pero bueno, el ejemplo que quiero es con una WH question, con cero estar. Entonces, ahí podría ser, um, uh, ¿dónde estuviste? Uh, ¿Dónde estuviste ayer a la una? ¿Dónde estuviste ayer a la una? Entonces la WH word sería where ¿Dónde? Ajá, ¿Dónde? Y ahora el estuviste where el sujeto que eres tú where were you y el complemento yesterday at one uh -huh. so, Entonces aquí no relacionado con cero estar, uso did. Relacionado con cero estar, no uso did, sino que uso was y were, depende de cuál sea el sujeto. Y ahí pues yo como persona, a mí me están preguntando dónde estuve. Entonces yo puedo decir, yo estuve en casa. I was at home. ¿Cómo se sienten ahora? ¿Un poco más claro? Gracias por la aclaración. No worries. Mañana les mando material eh, con las fórmulas de ambos. Gracias, teacher. Okay. Gracias. Y les voy a mandar unos enlaces para que ustedes puedan hacer ejercicios en línea que son, eh, no es nada relacionado con la plataforma. Eso es para que ustedes lo hagan opcional, ¿verdad? Como práctica en su tiempo libre, pues acuérdense que mañana finaliza un módulo y pues no se sabe cuánto tiempo van a estar sin recibir clases, a veces es una semana, a veces son solo tres días, a veces son dos semanas, etcétera. Entonces, pues en ese tiempo se nos puede enfriar lo que hemos estado haciendo. Entonces les voy a mandar algunos enlaces para que ustedes vean esos, eh, lo que hay ahí y practiquen. Y acuérdense, no es tarea, no se vayan a confundir, no vayan a pensar que es examen. <ríe> y si alguien no estuvo en clase, porque no están todos, eh, y pregunta, díganle, no, no es tarea, no es examen, solo es práctica. <ríe> Aquí a veces se confunden. Para no el cerebro. ¿Mm? Para que para no que... se le enfríe, para que no se tueste con este <ríe> calor. Para que no se oxide. <ríe> Sí. Ok, so eh, Para continuar tenemos este ejercicio en, Es en el match the questions with the answer eh, No es complicado, es solo hacer un matching Y pues nos sirve como ejemplo, ¿verdad? De WH questions with where, with was and other verbs So the first one is Where were you born? 
que ya habíamos discutido, es como para preguntar a dónde naciste, ¿verdad? Y que esa pues ni la discutimos ni la tratamos de traducir porque no tiene sentido. <risa> Where were you born? And the answer is letter E. In Hiroshima, Japan. Now, where did you grow up? How was your first day of school? Who was your first friend in school? And what was he or she like? And why did you take this class? Vamos a hacer el matching. Lo pueden hacer en su cuaderno y luego discutimos las respuestas. Okay, a uh, volunteer for number two. D. The question and the answer. Letter D. D. Agree. I agree on that. It took you. Yes, it's letter D. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Tokyo. Good. Number three. F. Letter F. F. Letter F. It, it was a little scary. Correct. Number four. E. E? Yeah. Or number four. Who was your first friend in the school? In, in school. Her name is, was Yumiko. Yes, that is correct. Letter A. Her name was Yumiko. A. Uh, A. Yes. And uh, number five. B. B. She was really friendly. Correct. And number six. Letter C. Let's see. Let's see. I wanted to improve my English. Any questions about this exercise? Improve, teacher. ¿Qué significa? Which one? Improve. Ah, mejorar. ¿Qué significa? Ah, okay. Mejorar. Mm -hmm. Es como decir, yo quería, quería mejorar mi inglés. I wanted to improve my English. 
Any other question? Okay, now we have this um, short exercise to ask and answer the questions in part A. Um, we can ask this one and use a year in your answers. Para practicar los años, porque esto es bien importante. Aquí, saying years. Eh, si ven acá, está 1906. Se pueden dividir, como decíamos, en dos cifras. Para no decirla así muy largo, porque si quiero decir 1906, sería 1906. Pero pues es más fácil y más práctico dividirlo en dos cifras. 1906. 1906. 1906. Uh -huh. Cuando estamos mencionando números de teléfono, uh, direcciones, años, el cero se pronuncia como O. 1906. Um, si ven el siguiente, está un 10, que es como decir 1986, 1986. Ahora, en el 2000. Ya, yeah, ahí sí no, no podemos decir 2000. So, sí podría entender, pero no es común ni eso. Lo regular es mencionar 2000. 2000. 2000. Si ya es 2001, podemos mencionarlo diciendo 2001 o simplemente 2001. Ambas formas es correcto. 2001 y 2001. Por eso el N está entre paréntesis porque lo puede omitir y no hay problema. Lo mismo con 2010. Podemos decirlo 2010 o 2010 o podemos dividirlo y decir 2010. Y para practicarlo podemos responder estas preguntas. When were you born? ¿En qué año nacimos? I was born in 1981, for example. I was born in, y mencionamos el año. When was your father born? Where were you born? Mm -hmm. Let's practice. Let's repeat. When were you born? When was your father born? When was your mother born? When did you turn 13? When did you start high school? When did you begin to study English? Questions? Uh, ¿Hay alguna pregunta? ¿Qué significa la oración 4? La 4, la pregunta 4. When did you turn 13? Es cuando le preguntamos cuándo cumpliste los 13. Sería similar como de decir en español, sería algo como cuándo cumpliste los 13. When did you turn 13? Gracias. Qué difícil. Hay que usar la calculadora. I cannot take a year. Uh -huh. I don't remember. So we can use the calculator. Let's try to answer these questions. Vamos a ver cuántas logramos terminar. Ya casi se nos... Uh, Llega el momento de terminar la sección, pero podemos responder aunque sea en las primeras dos o tres.
a volunteer for number two. When was your father born? My father born. My is, father was born. My father was born nineteen seventy one. Excellent. My father was born in nineteen seventy one. Excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, let's see a volunteer for number three. When was your mother born? When was your mother born? Nobody has it? Nobody has that one? When was your mother born? My mother born. My was mother was born. Mm -hmm. born in nineteen seven five. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Number four. When did you turn thirteen? When did you turn 13? A volunteer? When did you turn 13? I turned. Ah, el turno, el turno 13, ¿verdad? Ah, cuando cuando cumplió los 13, ajá. Okay, sí. I turn 13. Ahí tendríamos que responder usando el verbo turn. I turn 13. Volunteer. I turn 13. 2000. Okay, I turn 13 in 2000. In 2000. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Let's see the next one. When did you start high school? Es fácil. Solo es jugar con el mismo verbo. Nada más que lo conjugando. I started. Así como se lo puse. High school in 1995. 1995. Excellent. Very good. Now, um, when did you begin to study English? Ahí tendríamos que trasladar el begin to begin. I began. Mm -hmm. I began to study English in 2022. January. Okay, excellent. I began to study English in um, January last year, right? Or this year. Very good. So we're going to stop in this exercise. It's just one more thing left, the word power, and that's it. Solo queda el word power for vocabulary y la reading, and that's it. Tomorrow we finish the module, so Remember to join in to discuss about any topic that you have questions and also the final exam. So thank you for joining and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow, teacher. Bye. Bye.